Coming to the top of the mat, standing tall, let's inhale, raise the hands and exhale, bow forwards. Inhale, come halfway up with a long flat back and then exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana. With the inhale, come to your upward facing dog, shining your heart forwards and then exhale to downward facing dog. And here we'll stay for five breaths. So just making sure that the fingers are spread out wide, middle fingers pointing forward. On a long straight back, shoulders drawing back away from the ears. Pull that tummy in and listen to the Ujjayi breathing. With your next inhale, bring the feet to the hands, come halfway up with a flat back and then exhale, fall forwards. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up and stretch up high and exhale to standing. Next one, inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, bow forwards. Inhale, halfway up, long flat back and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. Pushing the mat away from you, you can send yourself further back into this posture. Stretch the heels down to the ground. And then with your inhale, step or jump the feet to the hands, come halfway up with a flat back and exhale, fold. With an inhale, come all the way up, reaching up, stretching up, maybe a little back bend, and exhale, come back to standing. Good, next one. Inhale, raise the hand, reach up, exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway up, really lengthen out of that back, and then exhale, step or jump to your Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, scooping forwards, upward facing dog with low shoulders and exhale, downward facing dog. Let's raise the right leg, tipping a little bit more weight into the arms and the shoulders. Don't let the hip come up, just keep it level. You're simply lifting that leg straight out behind you. You can have a go at spreading the toes as well. And then inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back, and exhale, bow forwards. Inhale, come all the way up, stretch up high, and exhale to standing. Brilliant. Next one then, inhale, raise the hands, reach up high, exhale, bow forwards. Inhale, come halfway up with a long back, and exhale, step or jump to your Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, it's a scooping forwards to find your upward facing dog, and then exhale to downward facing dog. And we can raise the left leg here as well, stretching it out long, spread the toes. Try and make sure the weight is equal in both hands. Slow, steady breathing. And then inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch the hands up high and exhale to standing. All right, last one of these. Inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, bow forwards. Inhale, halfway up, long flat back. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. Pull the belly button in towards the spine for Uddiyana Banda. Stretch those heels down, finding a nice length in the backs of the legs. Then with an inhale, step or jump the feet to the hands, come halfway up with a long back and exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch all the way up and exhale to standing. Well done. 
So Namaskar B then, let's inhale, sweep the mat coming to chair pose and exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, come halfway up with a flat back and then exhale to your Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then with an inhale, step the right foot forward, ground through the left heel and reach up into warrior. And then exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Remember, stay low in your lunge. So step in that left foot forward, reach up high and keep the hips low as you come back to your Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths here. Pressing the hands into the mat, seeing if you can rotate the arms so the shoulders twizzle in their sockets a tiny little bit and get a little bit more engaged, a kind of spiral, which results in the creases of their elbows rolling inwards towards one another. Just see if you can find this movement in your body. Slow, steady breathing. And then inhale, step or jump the feet to the hands, halfway up, flat back, and exhale, fold deeply. Bend your knees, then inhale, lift up the hands back into chair pose, and exhale, straighten up. Good, let's move along, next one. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, long back. And exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, take a big step forward with that right foot, place the left heel and reach up for your warrior A. As you exhale, hands down, foot back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Then inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. Stay low and continue to stay low as you come back for Chaturanga Dandasana. It's inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. Pulling the belly button up towards the spine. Stretching through the legs, lengthening through the spine, enjoying this delicious posture. All right, let's inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lengthen out the spine and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, come up to chair pose and exhale, straighten the legs, lowering the hands. Good, let's move on to the third one. Inhale, chair pose, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, flat back. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, left foot flat, warrior. And then exhale, back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Remember to keep those elbows in. And then inhale, scoop forwards for your upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. For this one, let's raise the right leg, bend the knee, drop the foot over behind you, turning into a twist. So try and lengthen the body. Think about the ribcage and the pelvis drawing away from one another, stretching through the waist. Keep the tummy pulled in to support the lower back. We can peep out underneath the right arm. Slow, steady breathing. And inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back, and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, come to chair pose, and exhale to standing. Good, fourth one, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, flat back. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhaling to downward facing dog. Then while you inhale, step the right foot forward, place the left heel and reach up for your warrior. And then exhale, make your way back to Chaturanga Dandasana, nice and slow. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. 
Option to raise that left leg, bend the knee, drop the foot over, turn the hips. So the left hip is pointing up, twist through the body, lengthen out. Slow, steady breathing. Good, and then inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back, exhale, fold, bend the knees, inhale, lift the hands, and exhale, straighten, last one, inhale, sweep the mat, exhale, fold forwards, find that yummy hamstring stretch, inhale, halfway up, long back, and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, scoop forward, bring the chest through the upper arms for upward facing dog, and exhale to downward facing dog, rolling over the toes. Inhale, warrior A with the right foot forwards and exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Then it's a step forward with the left foot as we inhale and reach up into warrior A and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Slow, steady breathing. If you've gotten a little out of breath, get that breath back under your control at this point. Then inhale to bring the feet to the hands, lengthen the spine and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, lift the hands and exhale, straighten up. Brilliant, well done. Hopefully you're feeling warm. Okay, so we're just going to have a little bit of fun here with a strength building a little move. So bringing your hands to the floor, we're just leaning the weight forwards over the hands and lifting the feet away from the floor so that we can hop back along the mat a little bit. Now you want to make this movement nice and slow and controlled and it's a lean of the weight, as much weight coming forwards over the hands as you can so the feet can float away from the mat. And we can have a go at doing that forwards as well. So after you've hopped to the back of the mat, just come back towards the front again. Now if the hamstrings are tight, you'll need to do that with bent knees, no problem. We're just trying to get that weight over the hands and build strength. Apparently in the end, we'll be able to lift into a handstand this way. <laughs> so roll yourself up to standing and then we'll come down for our standing forward bend. So take a nice stretch up with the hands first of all and find that hamstring stretch. So wherever it is for you, you might be holding on around the elbows, holding on to the other elbow. You might have the hands anywhere resting against the legs holding on to the ankles or the big toes and take your nice slow steady breathing here with the tummy pulled in. For the second one of these we'll slide the hands under the feet. You might need to hunker down a little bit more bending the knees to get those hands all the way under. Try and get the backs of the hands on the floor as well and under the feet not just the fingers. Really stretching the backs of the wrist there. So you can stay here or return to the first standing forward bend if you don't want to have a go at the bird of paradise, which is a bind from our standing forward bend into which we lift up. So if you are going to have a go at this bird of paradise, just sending the left arm through behind the left leg and see if you can reach hold and take hold of the fingers with that right hand, so reaching across the back. And then very slowly and carefully, see if you can come up to a standing position. It's really hard. You can make it look pretty by extending the leg out as straight as you can once you're up. So if you had a go on that side, have a go on the other, come back to your standing forward bend, maybe take a little wiggle and then see if you can thread that right arm through. You'll need to turn the shoulder over in its socket so that when you bend that arm, it comes behind the back, not just to the floor. And then the left hand is going to try and find it. And once you've got that bind, you have the option of trying to stand up, bringing that leg with you and then straightening it out and licking up. 
slow, steady breathing wherever you are. And making your way out. Take a shake through the shoulders, if, particularly if you did Bird of Paradise. Then we'll make our way back up to standing. We're going to have a go at tree pose. So shifting the weight onto the right foot, we're just bringing that left foot up either against the calf or the thigh and twizzling that knee out to the side. So we're just finding that external rotation of the hip in its socket. Find your balance. You could reach the hands high if you want to challenge that balance a little bit more. Or you could just place the hands against one another in the centre of the chest in a kind of prayer pose. Slow, steady breathing, really trying to lengthen the mid body here. So drawing the rib cage up away from the hips. Now we have the option of moving along into a half lotus here. So you'd just be bringing that foot across towards the hip bone of the standing leg. And then you can see whether that knee wants to fall down. If you want to add the forward fold, lengthen the body, like I was just saying, rib cage away from the hips. And then you should be able to kind of swallow that foot into the tummy area so you should be able to get a nice neat little fold if you lift the rib cage over the foot slow steady breathing wherever you are so just begin to make our way out and remember to make your transitions in full control as well and we'll just take those two postures on the other side so weight onto the left foot we're finding our tree pose first of all so the right foot just coming in against the leg and the knee rotating out to the side hip turns in its socket externally reaching the hands up turn me in find your balance look at something that's not moving And then making your way into half later. Again, with the option to fold forwards if you'd like to. If none of that feels, just stay in your tree pose. It's the same business. It's an external rotation of the hip. It's just how comfortable it feels to move into this variation. So you've always got that choice of whether you do that or not. And then when you're ready, just making your way out of that posture, nice and carefully, nice and controlled, stepping back to the top of the mat. Well done. So we're going to step out wide into our goddess pose. So turning the toes out and lifting the arms so elbows are bent and to the height of the shoulders and the hands are flexed. And we're just going to drop down through the knees. Now, if you want to, you can do some squat so squat really low in this posture and then just come back to the place you started so keeping the knees bent the whole time you're just going a little lower and coming back up this is amazing for building strength in the legs I've really noticed how this has improved the strength in mine let's come back to a static version staying nice and low and release so let's just point the feet forward so we can come to our wide leg standing forward bend so the inhale raise the hands up and exhale bow forwards so just finding a place where the back can be nice and straight you might be walking the hands out in front of you or if you can bring them back in line with the feet you might even play with the headstand if the head comes to the floor so wherever you are just nice length through the back and through the legs and slow, steady breathing. So for the second one of these, we'll inhale, stretch the hands up and exhale, bring them onto the hips. Inhale, lift the chest, feel the rib cage, lift up away from the hips and exhale, fold forward. Again, looking for that straight back, so just hold it out straight with the tummy pulled in. Check that you haven't dumped all the weight back into the heels, so we're making good use of the whole length of the foot. Slow, steady breathing.
Inhale, come up, stretch the hands up high and exhale, bring them behind you, interlace the fingers. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale, bow forwards. Straightening the back and just allow the arms to lift away from the back if they want to. A little bit of movement in the shoulders there. And then inhale, come up, stretch the hands up high and exhale, bring them onto the thighs. Now we're going to have a go at the twist here. So we've got very wide stance, just walk the feet in. Inhale, lift the chest, exhale, fold forwards. Then we're going to cross the hands so that the left arm is at the front and we can start to rotate clockwise until you can look out underneath your left arm. Slow, steady breathing, enjoying this twist and this lengthening through the body. And then we can just take that posture the other way. So crossing the hands at the feet with the right arm in front and then rotating anti-clockwise to turn into this twist. You can apply a little bit of pressure with the hands if you've been doing this a while to really find a bit more length and a bit more twist in this pose. Good stuff. So from here, let's just walk our way into a downward facing dog, taking any little wiggles here. And then we're just going to bring our left hand across to our right ankle to find another twist. So you could hold on to the inside or the outside of the ankle. Lengthen through the body. So don't let the back round to achieve this one. You're trying to lengthen. And then we'll just swap over. So bring the right hand back to the left ankle, looking out under that left arm. Good stuff. So coming back to downward facing dog, it's time for our plank challenge. Last one of these, six breaths. We're going to move it to seven breaths next week. So left hand on the floor, feet stacked and right hand reaching up. We're holding ourselves in a straight line and really stretching out. You can look up to the top hand as well. Slow, steady breathing, no cheating. And then we'll make our way to our middle plank, two hands on the floor or elbows if you're doing this in the lower version, no easier. Just holding the body out in a strong straight line here. Counting the breath. And then we'll finish off with side plank on our other side. So from here, we're just going to do some stretches through the hip flexor and the quads. So let's just step that right foot forward with the foot flat on the floor. We're bending the knee and extending that left leg right out behind us and drop down as far as you can, just supporting yourself with the hands or the fingertips on the floor. So we've got a real extension of that left leg. Now, if you want to bring that stretch into the quad and make it more intense, just bend that back knee, take hold of the left foot and squeeze that foot in towards the bottom. We're trying to stay dropping as low as we can through the hips the whole time. So you should be feeling quite an intense stretch all the way over the left hip and down into the front of the left thigh. So you can release that and if you're feeling brave, you can have a little go at moving towards Hanumanasana. So you'd be sliding the right heel forwards 
and the left knee back. You can again take plenty of weight on the hands here. Uh, so even if you're quite high up, if you feel quite far from Hanumanasana, you can still work towards it by supporting yourself on the hands. Hanumanasana, of course, is a big stretch in the hamstring of the front leg and the quad of the back leg. And we do quite a lot of hamstring stretching in yoga, but maybe a little less quad stretching. So that's why these uh, postures here are, are quite good. So let's step that left foot forwards now, placing the foot flat on the floor and coming into that very low lunge. So you're trying to drop the hips as low as you can and send that right leg straight out and back behind you. So a real stretch into the hip flexor. And then if you want to bend the knee, take a hold of the foot and squeeze it in, you should get more of a stretch into the quad. So a good preparation for Hanumanasana. So just holding here, breathing nice and slow and steady, obviously not pushing beyond where your body wants to go. We're just exploring what we have. And then if you want to move on toward a Hanumanasana, you're letting that left leg come forwards and straighten and continuing to extend back with the right leg. If you are coming down, it can feel quite nice to lie out over that front leg as a variation. Slow, steady breathing. Once we've stretched the muscles enough and get comfortable in this posture, it is very lovely just to lie down and have a little sneeze. <laughs> So let's just carefully make our way out of this posture. We'll just draw that back leg around and we'll just have a little bit of fun with the wide-legged balance. We'll enter this by coming into Navasana, first of all, boat pose. So just lift the legs up and sit up using your core strength. So try and keep that back straight. And if, you, uh, if you're ready, you can just begin to take hold of the big toes and then open the feet. So keep pushing the chest forwards with that nice straight back. If you round the back and drop, then your center of gravity will just shift a tiny bit backwards and you'll roll back. Okay, good stuff. So we're just going to have a go at Marichyasana A here. So with the left leg bent, we're folding forwards into a seated forward bend. And if you have the bind, you can reach that left arm around the top of the knee and find the fingers with the right hand behind the back. So again, we're trying to keep a straight back here. Don't worry if you don't have the bind, just let the hands rest. Okay, so we're gonna have a go at Marichasana B. So that's gonna involve just popping a little half lotus in there before we bring that left leg up. Now, if you don't have the half lotus, instead of having the foot there on top of the thigh, just pop it on the floor behind the heel of the left foot. That makes it a lot easier. Then again, we're turning that shoulder over in its socket, finding the bind, passing the arm just by the knee there and reaching around with the right hand. Again, we try not to curl up too much in this posture. So find a forward bend sensation. And after this, we're going to come into Mary Chelsea's C, which is a twist with a bind. So let's just bring that right leg out straight and just push the left knee across the midline and turn into your twist. Now, the bind is the same deal as before, but it feels a bit weird in this twist. So we turn the shoulder over in its socket and we try and pass the armpit over the knee and then we reach the hands behind the back. Now, the challenge here is to stay sitting up straight. Something I'm still working on this posture. Again, don't worry if there's no bind. Good. So let's release that and have a go at Marichasana A, B and C on the other side. So bending the right knee in, we're folding forwards, turning the arm so the shoulder twizzles in its socket and we can reach that right hand behind the back, maybe finding the bind with the other arm. Coming into your seated forward bend with a long spine here. So 
So we're going to move into Mario Charles and the B next. So remember that's the option of the half lotus or just simply bringing that left foot onto the floor behind the right heel. So much easier. But if you do have a half lotus, then bring that foot up, heel to the navel and fold forward, see if you can find that bind. So right shoulder twizzles in its socket so that when the arm bends, it comes behind the back, catching the knee. So you're very compact. Everything's squeezed up into a little ball, but try not to round the back. Slow, steady breathing. And then we can have a go at Mary Chastner C on this side. So again, just let that left leg come out straight. We want to nudge that right knee over the midline to try and find this twist and this bind. A little bit awkward. Roll the shoulder over in its socket, reach the arm behind you, and then see if you can catch the fingers. And in the posture, if you have got that bind, you really want to continue working to find the straightest back. So you're always trying to sit up. When I began this posture, I was very curled forwards and it was kind of ugly and wasn't doing my back much good. So I just gave up on the bind for quite a few years. But I've been doing some twisting work now and I think the bind is a little better. We can take a seated forward bend here, just letting the hands come wherever they come to and drawing the spine out nice and long. Slow, steady breathing. So from here, we'll just come to an external rotation of the hips by bringing the soles of the feet together, but not close to the body. Send them forward so the legs are a diamond shape. And you can just explore a little bit of a forward lean there. So if it's comfy, you can take a hold of the toes and snuggle your forehead into the arches of your feet. Or for extra fun, you could have a go at threading the arms back under the backs of the thighs and reaching behind you. Once they're through, you could begin to climb one foot up on top of the other so that the head tucks behind the feet. Now, if you're more flexible than me, you might even be able to clasp the hands behind the back. At the moment, I'm just reaching them behind the waist and they're just kind of flapping around there. Wherever you are, slow, steady breathing. So if you have threaded the arms through behind you, uh, you can keep the arms under the legs. We're going to come into a wide legged seated forward bend next. And if you have done this fold, uh, then you can just separate the feet, turn the shoulders over in their sockets so the palms face the floor and then come into your wide legged seated forward bend. If that seems like a ridiculous idea, just come up and then come into your wide legged seated forward bend in the regular way, just letting the hands come wherever they come to. Or if you don't have much of a forward fold, then just sitting up nice and straight with the chest proud and the feet wide. Slow, steady breathing. and then making your way out. So we're just going to have a little go at a headstand here, but if you prefer a different inversion, uh, then go right ahead. So we're starting in a tabletop pose and then dropping to the elbows, clasping the hands and snuggling the top kind of back of the head up against that cradle. Tucking the toes, we're lifting the hips to a downward facing dog kind of position. And then over time, you can walk your toes in and notice more weight coming down into the arms and the shoulders. So you need to press the elbows into the floor quite hard to take some weight off the head. And you'll feel that that's an engagement of the shoulder muscles. So really uh, working there over many months you might feel a lightness in the toes as you walk them in towards the elbows and they may be able to lift high into headstand. 
try and resist kicking. That's the hardest thing in the world because uh, it's kind of uh, it's a fun feeling to think that you might go into headstand. So uh, that often gives you a desire to kick up. You won't be able to find your balance if you kick up. That's the trouble. And you're quite likely to kick so hard that you'll kick yourself all the way over. It's not the end of the world if you fall out of headstand, but if there's something in your way, uh, that could be quite painful. If you do have a stable headstand, you can have a go at the leg lowers and raises that I'm demonstrating right now. Um, this involves sending the bottom right out behind you to act as a counterbalance as the legs come down so that the feet don't fall all the way down. So like most things in yoga, this is just about shifting the weight around rather than brute strength. So whatever inversion you chose, we can just come down into a little resting posture, maybe child's pose. Notice what the breath's doing. If you chose a challenging inversion, the breath might be coming a little faster. See if you can get it back under control, nice, slow, steady. And then our final pose before Shavasana is just going to be some gentle twists. So coming to be lying on your back with the knees bent up, we'll just drop those knees over to the right hand side and turn the body to the left. Now as a variation, it can feel quite nice to take hold of the big toe of that top. Slow, steady breathing. Just allow the body to drop into this posture. We don't need to use any muscular strength really to hold ourselves here. So it's a passive pose. And when you're ready, just rolling that over to the other side. Again, you might choose to extend the top leg by holding on to the big toe. Try and have the backs of both shoulders on the ground if at all possible. Again, just sort of relinquish yourself into this posture. No work to be done. But sometimes there are muscles that are holding on nervously. So just notice that first of all. And see whether you can relax a little bit with the following exhales. Coming back to the middle, we can give the knees a little hug. And then just begin to wiggle your way out into Shavasana. Letting the breath be nice and gentle, whatever rhythm it needs. Letting the whole body be supported by the ground. Again, no muscular work here, everything soft. Feeling the full weight of the head being supported. <laughs> 